Grace, mercy, and peace are yours through our Savior, Jesus, our King, who came once and will come again, and whose coming we long for, hope for, wait for. We enter the busiest time of the year, probably, for most of us, the time after Thanksgiving to Christmas, lots of things to do, lots of things to get ready for. And this is just simply an a, a example of how life is, too. We, we become so busy with living. How will we, as God's people, during this busy time, and then, yes, as we live our life, make sure that we have in mind and always keep in front of us the reason that we celebrate Christmas, the reason that we follow our Savior, Christ Jesus. Well, human beings have a way of keeping important things in front of them. They lift them up. They hold them up. And you can see this throughout the course of human history. Every society and culture does this. When there's something that's just really big and important, they put it on a hill. They put it on a mountain. They build it really high so that no matter where you are, you can always lift your eyes up and be reminded about what is truly important, what we are all about, what we take comfort from. I remember being at a pastor's conference and hearing a presentation about how our society, Western society, seems to be shifting from being Christocentric or a Christian to not Christian, not Christocentric, secular. And one of the things that they showed as evidence of this was what human beings used to build and what we're building now. They showed a picture of the skyline of Milwaukee. If you can just picture that in your head, Milwaukee, what does that look like? A skyline of Milwaukee. And they showed it from when Milwaukee was first founded in the early 1800s. And when you looked out, you saw what they were building. Large churches, big steeples. When you looked at the skyline, that was what was lifted high. So that no matter where you were in the city, you could look up and see, ah, there is my center then fast forward about 100 years, late 1800s, early 1900s, skyline changes a little bit. Now there's competition. Up high now are built factories, big chimneys. That's what was being built at that time. And in Milwaukee, you know what kind of factories they were. They were breweries. And they fast forward and up about another 100 years to the late 1900s, and again, the skyline has much changed. You can't even really see the steeples anymore. Now high, built for all to see and look at were banking institutions. That's what was high and built in Milwaukee. And then it fast forward to present day right now, and you look at it, and it's the same thing. There's banking institutions, financial institutions, but also medical institutions. That's what we as a society are building big and large and tall. Our banking facilities, our medical facilities. That's where our heart and our center is. We just don't build churches big and tall anymore because most people just don't use churches anymore. Take what you will from that little example. I thought it was interesting. And before you're disheartened because our, our society doesn't seem to build churches or find the church as the center anymore, we need to hear our God speak to us from the prophet Isaiah. That though maybe mankind goes one way, maybe even in our own lives, we, we put up mountains and tall things for us to look at and center ourselves on, there is a mountain, a building, a dwelling, a temple that God has constructed, and it dwarfs all things. The mountain of the Lord, from which the word of God flows and to which the nations of this world come. We read from the prophet Isaiah the first part of his long book of prophecy as many things to say. Isaiah lived about 700 years before Jesus was born. He lived in the southern kingdom of Judah. And during Isaiah's life, the northern kingdom of Israel 
because they refuse to repent of their sin and return to the Lord, was destroyed by the Syrian Empire. And Isaiah was living in the southern part. He was working among the southern kingdom. And when they saw that, when they saw their relatives to the north being destroyed, they were to learn a lesson, a warning from God. Return to me. Repent of sin. Otherwise, enemies will come. But when they saw that destruction, unfortunately, that was not the lesson that many took away from that. No, instead, many of the people in the southern kingdom of Judah looked and they said, God would never do that to us. We have Mount Zion. We have David's city. We have on Mount Zion the temple. There's no way God would destroy his temple, destroy his mountain, destroy David's city. So we're okay. I don't need to repent. I don't need to return to the Lord. They were paying lip service to their God. They were looking for comfort and peace for their center in something that just wasn't going to give it. A physical building, a physical city a physical mountain. So God sent Isaiah to preach to the people and turn their hearts back to him by reminding them that he, the Lord had called for them to follow him in faith, not just actions, but in faith. And because of their refusal to repent, there would come a day when they would look to the mountain of the Lord, they would look to that temple, and they would see not pilgrims streaming to it, not the sounds of worship and festival, but they would see smoke and fire. Because the Lord would allow the Babylonians to come to destroy David's city, to destroy the temple, and to make Mount Zion a place of mourning. When they heard this, many in Judah didn't believe, and they kept going as they were. But some did, and their hearts were saddened. And that is why God also sent Isaiah to not just prophesy and proclaim a coming destruction, but for those who were repentant, Isaiah had a different message to proclaim. That is what we have for us in Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah is picturing this wonderful message that God has for his people who are used to looking up to Mount Zion, to that hill of Jerusalem, to that temple that no longer was there, to receive a wonderful promise and comfort. This is what Isaiah said. This will take place in the latter days. The mountain of the Lord's house will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all nations will stream to it like a river. Many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he will instruct us about his ways and we will walk in his paths. For from Zion the law will go out, the Lord's word will go out from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations. He will mediate for many peoples. Then they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is God's word. For those who were looking to the temple to the city of David, to the Mount Zion, the physical things as their source of comfort and peace. They're completely missing the purpose of that temple. God had instructed his people to build a temple to be the spiritual center of their worship, not because God needed his people to worship him, but because he wanted them to be prepared for something greater that was coming. 
Daily sacrifices were offered for sin, not because they actually took care of sin, but because God was preparing his people for the great sacrifice for sin that was coming into the world. This temple was beautiful. It was to illustrate not a, a physical house where God would live in, but something greater, a place greater where God would live on this earth. What was Isaiah seeing when he saw this mountain of the Lord being established, towering over every mountain on this earth? Well, we know what that is. Scripture tells us what this mountain is. It's what we are celebrating and preparing to celebrate once again. It's our Savior, Jesus. And indeed, if you were to go to Mount Zion today, would you find a temple? You'd find the ruins of a temple and a mosque. If you went to look at Mount Zion, would you say, wow, that's the biggest mountain I've ever seen? No, you wouldn't. It's only like 3,000 feet. Not very impressive. But well, we know what happened at Mount Zion. The king of all universe, our Savior Christ Jesus, was born, eventually made his way to Mount Zion, to the city of David. And there on that mountain, though small it was, outside the city of Jerusalem on a hill, our Savior was crucified on a cross. There on a city, on a hill outside the city of Jerusalem, the Lamb of God was slain for the sins of the whole world. There in the city of Jerusalem on a hill outside the city was a grave. And in that grave, the Savior's body was laid because he died, but only for three days. In Jerusalem on a hill outside that city, that grave was opened on the third day, Easter Sunday, because Jesus had came back to life as proof that death was defeated and there was eternal life for those who believe in him. There is no event in human history that comes close to the importance and greatness of what happened on that Mount Zion. What comes to us through our Savior, Christ Jesus, that stands tall above all else. And Isaiah saw that from that moment, from that Savior, would flow the word of the Lord. We come to this mountain every time we gather to hear God's word, right now we are on the mountain of the Lord. When Isaiah saw this mountain, he saw people streaming to it, all the nations of the earth coming to this mountain to receive that wonderful message of salvation. That too is happening. And Isaiah saw a temple being built, a temple in which God lives and dwells on this earth far greater than any human construction could ever imagine. And we too know what this temple, this house where God lives is on this earth. Jesus told his disciples, wherever two or three gather together in his name, there he is with them, dwelling with them. The temple is right here. It's you and me, believers, gathered together in his name. The Apostle Paul describes it this way in Ephesians. He says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too, are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. What Isaiah saw was this huge mountain on which there was an awesome temple built not of gold or silver or marble or wood, a great temple built of souls washed by the blood of the Lamb. And so what? So what? If human beings have stopped building large and grand churches, so what if banks and hospitals dwarf the churches that we have building? The Lord has not stopped building His temple. The mountain is higher than all other things. 
So again, how are we going to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus to remember the reason we are celebrating Christmas and not just now but our entire life? It's by lifting our eyes up to this mountain. And that maybe is our encouragement for today because you and I know that there are many mountains that we make in our life. There are many things that we hold up that we think is so important and they draw comfort from Him. And not all of them are bad. Not all of them are good. There are times when we construct mountains of our wealth. As long as I have my wealth, I'll be okay. There are times we are constructing mountains of our prosperity and, and, and of our health. As long as my life is going okay, then I'm okay. There's the mountains of children and family, the mountains of work, whatever it is. Sometimes we use those mountains to draw comfort. And sometimes there are mountains that are bad. I think we all know what the mountain of sin looks like, staring you right in the face what you did. There's the mountain of death that we're just traveling closer and closer to. There's the mountain of loss. When we lose a loved one, they seem scary. My dear friends, there will come a day that no matter what mountain we think was important, health, wealth, family, good times, bad times, they all will just be fire and smoke, destroyed, taken away. That is why we fix our eyes on the mountain of the Lord that dwarfs all of them. Through our Savior Christ Jesus, we have forgiveness, we have eternal life, we have victory over death. In every, in every circumstance, no matter how good or how bad it is, let us draw comfort from that mountain. And may we always rejoice and find peace in our King. Amen. And please stand. And as Paul wrote to us, and we heard before, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join together and confess our Christian faith, that mountain the Lord has placed before us, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried.